story recapped here. Today I'm gonna explain a horror, action, and comedy film called Night of the Demons. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In New Orleans in 1925, Evangeline Broussard prepared to hang herself from the balcony of their mansion. However, a man named Louis stopped her, assuring her it truly was him. Unfortunately, Evangeline didn't believe him and proceeded to jump off the balcony to end her life, ripping her head off in the process. Meanwhile, Louis could only look at Evangeline, finally revealing that he was a demon. 85 years later, Angela decides to throw a Halloween party at the infamous Broussard mansion. Then, friends Maddie and Suzanne eventually show up at Lily's house, and they spend minutes complimenting and criticizing each other's costumes. Meanwhile, a lady in a ballerina costume gives candies to some trick-or-treaters. On the other hand, Maddie's ex-boyfriend Colin goes to a bar to see Nigel, the man he's doing business with. Nigel is upset that they're not earning much, so he demands twice what Colin usually gives him the next night. Nigel doesn't care how Colin will sell their stuff, but he makes it clear there will be consequences if the guy doesn't double his money. Moments later, the three ladies finally arrive at the Broussard mansion. The party has already started, so Lily immediately heads to the bar to get a drink. Then Colin shows up too, but his goal is to supply the guests with his stuff without alerting Angela. Inside, Lily bumps into her ex-boyfriend Dex and his friend Jason. While on the other hand, Maddie realizes that Colin is also at the party. Suzanne asks Maddie if she's okay, so Maddie assures her that she is. Then Maddie goes to the bathroom bathroom to fix her hair and put on some lipstick. But she gets terrified when a hand suddenly bursts through the mirror and grabs her. Luckily, Maddie manages to break free and run away. On her way back to the party, Maddie runs into Suzanne and tells her what happened. Then, Maddie tries to show Suzanne the broken mirror, but it's already fixed when they get to the bathroom. The ladies think it was just a prank orchestrated by Angela, but Maddie can't help but wonder how their friend did it. After that, Angela welcomes the guests and praises them for coming to a place like that. She also tells them the story of Evangeline Broussard, who invited over the love of her life and some friends for dinner one Halloween. Then, Evangeline's sweetheart and his friends were never heard from again. And although Angela isn't sure what exactly happened, she wants to honor Evangeline and her dark soul. So Angela urges the guests to do whatever they want and have a good time. Moments later, Maddie sees Colin selling his precious substance and feels disappointed. But Jason is there to cheer her up, and the two drink and dance to together. Meanwhile, Lily and Dex go to a bedroom to have some privacy. Downstairs, Angela gets pissed when she sees Colin at the party, so she immediately confronts Diana and asks if she let Colin in there. However, the woman responsible for admitting guests denies it. At the same time, Suzanne continues to drink like there's no tomorrow, making Maddie worried about her. Unfortunately, it isn't long before the cops show up to stop the party and instruct everyone to go home, sending Maddie and Jason running upstairs. On the other hand, Colin quickly hides his stuff in a grate before leaving, while Angela desperately looks for Diana. Then, Maddie and Jason eventually find Lily and Dex, informing them the party is over and they need to go. As it turns out, Angela forgot to get a permit for the party, so Sergeant Dawson finds her before telling her to clean up the place, leaving her enraged. Then later on, Colin returns and asks Angela if the heating grate leads to the basement, but Angela doesn't know and doesn't care. At the same time, Maddie, Lily, Dex and Jason show up to look for Suzanne, who passed out during the raid. With nothing else to do, Angela finally goes with Colin to the basement. There, Colin tries to find where his stuff landed, but instead, they discover a secret door leading to another room. Then, Angela immediately calls the others, telling them there are bodies in the basement. Once everyone is in the basement, Angela can't help but feel excited that they found those bodies, thinking they're the people who disappeared from Evangeline's party. Meanwhile, Colin immediately leaves once he finds his stash and makes it clear he's not coming back. Then, Angela tries taking a gold tooth from one of the skeletons, but the skeleton suddenly bites her. At the same time, Colin returns and informs everyone that the gate is locked, so he asks Angela for the keys, immediately heading upstairs once he learns they're in her bag. Then, the others follow Colin to finally get out of there, and Angela trails behind them as she inspects her wounded finger. However, Angela doesn't even close the door, and she fails to notice the skeleton moving. Outside, Colin fails to open the gate. They then return to the mansion to join Angela, who's starting to feel dizzy because of her wound. Frustrated, Colin throws away the keys, and Angela tells them they have to spend the night in that place. Meanwhile, Suzanne starts talking about the bodies in the basement, saying they have something to do with black magic.
magic. Confident that she's right, Suzanne narrates how Evangeline's maid survived and was found by the cops in the morning in her room, where she wrote stories and spells all over the walls. According to Suzanne, Evangeline was in love with Louis Devereaux, who didn't feel the same way about her. So Evangeline turned to love spells and started practicing all kinds of magic, and somehow she got in touch with evil spirits. The spirits then tricked Evangeline and told her Louis would fall in love with her if she invited him and some friends over for a Halloween seance. Of course, that was a lie, and everything went wrong. By the end of the night, six people had disappeared. Evangeline was dead, and the maid had gone crazy. However, Suzanne's friends don't believe the story and only find it ridiculous. So Suzanne just continues to drink and smoke. But it isn't long before they all notice that Angela isn't feeling well. Angela then goes to the bathroom, where she eventually turns into a demon. A few minutes later, a cheerful Angela returns to the living room and counts how many people there are. Then, she joins the others in playing spin the bottle, which upsets Colin because it seems like they're not even worried about the bodies downstairs. However, since he can't leave that place, he decides to participate in the game too. After that, the bottle points to Angela, so she eagerly kisses Dex. Of course, Lily isn't thrilled by that and quickly takes Dex away, unable to notice that he's starting to feel sick. The two then go to a bedroom, where Lily tries to make Dex feel better. In the living room, Angela urges her friends to drink more. Then, Maddie helps Colin find another gate when she notices Angela flirting with him, making Suzanne chuckle. Once they're gone, Angela turns her attention to Jason, who clearly feels uncomfortable sitting with her. So Jason eventually follows Maddie and Colin, leaving the ladies behind. Concurrently, Lily enjoys her time with Dex, who eventually becomes a demon. Then, Lily screams as Dex roughly takes her from behind, making Maddie and the two guys wonder what's happening inside the mansion. Unfortunately, it isn't long before Lily turns into a demon too and she doesn't mind the worms coming out of Dex's mouth. Meanwhile, Angela takes Suzanne to another room and dances with her. Then, they eventually kiss, and Suzanne soon notices that they're floating. Sadly, Suzanne doesn't even have time to react, for a demonic Angela suddenly mauls her and rips off her face. Outside, Maddie asks Colin how he's been, so he tells her his life hasn't changed. At the same time, Jason tells them there's no other gate in that place, forcing them to just go back to the mansion. Then, Jason goes to the bathroom to relieve himself, only to be startled by Lily. The girl tries to use her charm on Jason, who immediately notices she's acting weird. Unfortunately, Jason fails to do anything when Lily inserts a lipstick inside her chest and pulls it out between her legs, causing her to bleed profusely. Bothered, Jason asks Maddie if Lily is into magic, saying there might be something wrong with her. However, Jason struggles to tell Maddie and Colin what really happened, and when he takes them to the bathroom, Lily is already gone. At the same time, there's no trace of blood anywhere, making Colin think Jason is just seeing things. After that, the three start looking for Lily, and they get surprised to see something crawling on the floor. Unfortunately, a demonic Suzanne suddenly comes at Maddie, who hits her with a candlestick. Then, Jason stabs Suzanne with a fireplace poker before fleeing with Colin and Maddie, but the demon doesn't even get hurt. At the same time, they soon discover that Angela is also a demon and quickly look for a place to hide. The three wonder what happened to their friends and get even more scared and knowing that they can't escape because the gate is closed doesn't really help. So they decide to go to the basement to find a way out, unaware that they're being followed. In the basement, Colin luckily finds a gun, which Jason quickly takes. Then, they lock themselves in the room with skeletons, wondering how they will escape. At the same time, Maddie notices that there are only two skeletons there, pointing out that there were six earlier. However, the guys just ignore her and argue about how they'll get out. But it isn't long before Maddie notices a trap door. With no time Time to waste, Colin immediately opens the trap door and heads into a tunnel, followed by Jason and Maddie. Unfortunately, the tunnel is too dark, so they can't see how far down it goes. Then, they reach a dead end, leaving them with no other choice but to go back. However, several thick vines suddenly restrain them and cause Jason to drop the gun, and that's when Dex and Lily show up, crawling toward them on the ceiling. Luckily, Jason finds a saw and starts cutting the thick vine restraining him, and it isn't long before Maddie and Colin free themselves too. Then, Jason shoots Dex, but his wound immediately heals. Unfortunately, Jason fails to protect himself from Dex and ends up getting hurt, so Colin quickly comes to his aid and hits the demon with a metal bar. At the same time, Colin notices how the bar burns Dex's hands, giving him time to finally subdue him. 
On the other hand, Lily sneaks up on Maddie and tries to bite her, but Colin immediately helps his ex-girlfriend and knocks the demon down. After that, they rush to the room with skeletons and lock the trap door, but the demons are relentless and still try to get to them. Meanwhile, Jason points out that the rust from the metal bar is harmful to the demons. A few minutes later, Lily suddenly shows up and chokes Jason using her tentacle. So Jason chops off her tentacle with a saw, but he accidentally cuts his thigh. Then, Colin strikes Lily with a metal bar and repeatedly hits her before finally fleeing with Jason and Maddie. With the demons still after them, the three lock themselves inside a room. Maddie quickly tends to Jason's wound. While on the other hand, Colin notices some symbols on the wall. So Colin peels off the paint, and upon seeing the writings on the wall, they realize they're inside the maid's room. Maddie then reads them and says they're safe there because of the spells that the maid wrote. At the same time, it finally dawns on her that they're being chased by demons, who want nothing more than to turn their world into hell's playground. To make things worse, they learn that those demons were cast out of hell after trying to take the devil's place. But they could be free if they managed to possess seven people on Halloween night. So they tricked Evangeline because they needed seven bodies to possess. And six people immediately turned into demons through a kiss or a bite. Unfortunately, Evangeline realized she'd made a mistake. So she killed herself to prevent the demons from getting out, aware that they couldn't possess dead bodies. Once Maddie is done telling Evangeline's story, Colin realizes they're the only thing standing between them and the end of the world. World. At the same time, Maddie points out that the demons are made from ancient elements, just like iron. So, since rust corrupts iron, the demons don't like it. Luckily, Halloween will be over soon, which means the demons are running out of time to possess more bodies. Later on, Maddie wakes up from a nap and goes to the bathroom to wash her hands. Then, she sees the drawer barricading the door moving, and the door slowly opens. Frightened, Maddie tries waking up the guys and walks toward the door, where she sees Angela waiting for her. However, Angela can't enter the room because of the spells on the walls, but she says there are other ways for her to get inside. Angela then makes it clear she'll make Colin suffer before killing him. Him, but Maddie just slams the door in her face. Meanwhile, the guys finally wake up, and Colin rejoices because they only need to wait one more hour before they can finally escape. However, blood suddenly starts dripping all over the walls, washing away all the symbols. Then, the demons break through the walls, so the trio rushes to wipe off the blood before rewriting the spells using charcoal. Fortunately, the demons eventually go away, and they realize it's already morning. So Colin takes a metal bar and peeks outside, and once he's sure that the demons are gone, they start grabbing anything with rust on it before leaving. However, once they reach the front door, they discover that everything is just an illusion. It becomes dark again the moment Colin breaks the glass on the door, and that's when the demons come at them. Sadly, despite trying hard to fight back, Jason gets disemboweled by Angela. Colin and Maddie can only look in horror as Angela feasts on Jason's guts, and it isn't long before the guy turns into a demon too. With no other choice, Maddie and Colin quickly return to the maid's room. Then, Colin goes to the bathroom to wash his face, but he gets nervous when he knows notices the bathtub filled with blood, so he uses the metal bar to check if there's anything else inside the tub, only to be ambushed by Dex. Upon seeing this, Maddie immediately helps Colin as he kicks Dex and closes the bathroom door. Maddie then realizes the bathroom isn't protected by spells, but as she talks to Colin, the guy suddenly falls through the rotten floorboards and lands in the basement. Unfortunately, Colin also breaks his leg, but despite that, he still begs Maddie not to come down there. However, Maddie has no intention of leaving Colin and uses a rope to reach the basement. Sadly, Colin turns into a demon while Maddie tends to his wound, so Maddie hits him with rusted nails. After that, Maddie returns to the maid's room and loads the gun with rusted nails before bravely hunting the demons. Moments later, Maddie shoots the demons one by one. Unfortunately, Maddie eventually runs out of ammo, and the demons continue to come after her. So with a few more minutes until daylight, Maddie ties a rope around her neck and jumps off the balcony, just like Evangeline did. Then, the sun finally rises and the demons disintegrate before returning to the basement. Meanwhile, Maddie opens her eyes and gets down, revealing that she also tied the rope around her waist. Maddie feels proud for outsmarting the demons, and as she prepares to leave, she comes across two men looking for Angela. One of them says they're there to pick up the sound equipment, so Maddie tells them to go inside, and takes one last look at that accursed mansion before finally leaving. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.